My name is Adam Habig. I am president and co-founder of Freedom Health Works, and today we're talking about the healthcare industry, where we've been, where we are, and really where we're going as an industry. The, the system we have today, I've heard it referred to as really a sick care system instead of a healthcare system, and I think that's fairly accurate. Uh, it's one where uh, most care that's delivered is reactive in nature, which means there's been something that's occurred, something's gone wrong. And uh, then we have physicians and, and very skilled uh, clinical uh, personnel that step in to try to fix that problem. And uh, f that's not necessarily the best way to operate, as anyone would tell you, the old ounce of prevention worth a pound of cure type adage. Uh, but it really has been something that has developed over time as the entire industry has evolved uh, to become what it is today. So if we rewind and go back to really where healthcare started. Uh, we're talking about rewind the clock pre-World War II, really. And, and at that time, it was um, very much a cottage industry, if you will. Um, small town physicians ran mostly independent practices. You had hospitals run by mostly not-for-profits. Uh, a lot of religious affiliated groups would run hospitals and clinics like this. With the advent of World War II, uh, there were wage controls imposed on the American economy in, during the war effort, to help the war effort. And one way that, that companies really would get around the wage controls and try to attract better talent because workers were scarce during the war was to start offering perks, and one of those became health insurance. Um, so really, when we talk about health insurance and its domination of the healthcare landscape today in America, we're dating back to something that happened over 70 years ago uh, in response to a wartime economy and the restrictions imposed by the government. And so when you ask where we are today, we're at really a crossroads where that mentality, that line of thinking that if I have health insurance, I can check that box, I have all the health care I need, I'm covered you know, for anything that might happen, there's really been a disconnect. That's becoming detached from reality. And people are finding out with their high deductibles and with the narrow networks that have been imposed, uh, that being insured, having health insurance, does not guarantee access to high quality, affordable health care. Uh, when I say we're at a crossroads, with that decoupling of health insurance from health care, that's where we see the emergence of alternative practice models, like direct primary care, that harken back to the age when really health insurance did not dictate everything about an individual's health care. They had more choice, more flexibility, uh, and it was more affordable for them in general. Uh, looking into my crystal ball, I mentioned earlier the decoupling of health insurance from health care. And that is really a psychological, um, really a transformative process that's occurring within the minds of consumers and patients today. And that's terribly exciting because uh, we actually can see the reemergence of some of the, the great efficiencies and the benefits of a more free market system within healthcare. Uh, which have completely, uh, which have been absent for the better part of the last three or four decades, uh, sadly. So what, we're, what, what I predict we're going to see is that insurance, number one, will return to looking more like traditional insurance, like it does in any other industry, like, it, like, your, like your car insurance or your homeowner's insurance or something like that. That's what insurance will look like in healthcare. That means that it will protect you from catastrophic, unforeseen, uh, we call it the hit by the bus scenario, things that come out of left field that you, you cannot predict, but that's what insurance is supposed to do, is protect you from financial ruin from those types of issues. Uh, I think we'll see then other innovations like direct primary care start to fill the gap that uh, is created when insurance retreats back into what it ought to do, back into the box it originally sprang from. Uh, we'll see direct primary care as one option where individuals can for a, a really predictable, transparent, low monthly price, um, open up uh, really all the access they would, they would ever need to a primary care physician. Uh, and and um, as we've talked about many times, um, for most of us that's the only physician, the only care we're going to need in a given year. Uh, it's a perfect match for that scenario I just described uh, because you're going to have your primary care uh, uh, taken care of, check that box, no more networks, no more deductibles, no more co-pays. If you need it, you go, you use it. And then the insurance will fall into the background uh, like it ought to, and if you ever would be hospitalized or need some kind of a, a specialist procedure, um, it would be there uh, to uh, 
help you with that financially. Because in the end, insurance in any industry, healthcare included, is a financial instrument. And no one should ever trust their health to a financial instrument if they can avoid it.